Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. I'll be doing Can Sip Saturday this evening, looking at the weather for the next six months from the Canadian model. It's just for fun, um, but we're going to go ahead from uh, December through to May, can you believe, uh, with the uh, Canadian Can Sips long range model from the website tropicaltidbits.com. You can find a link to Tropical Tidbits on the links page. Um, so earlier on, we did the uh, week ahead forecast. You can find that here on the homepage underneath this video just scroll down the page a little bit and there it'll be um so that's taking us through the next week and it's gonna be a very mild and set a week don't think i'm giving the game away by uh, telling you that uh, but have a look at the uh, video if you want to know more about the uh, coming week this one is going ahead six months um and it's just for fun really but chance of there so might as well use them same as the uh, cfs at uh, six months look ahead but we do later on in the month we might as well have a look at the charts because they're available but don't take it too seriously so i'll get on with that in a second but before i get on with that just to say about the ads there's links to articles on all the pages at gas office have a browser widgets and click through the links if there's any articles that you're interested in and thanks very much for doing that there's also video ads on most of the pages which open out within the content when you watch them they'll close back up again so it's all helping to pay for the website uh the christmas shop is open um so you've got any christmas shop to do at amazon just click the button uh, that says Christmas Shop. It's underneath this video on my homepage. Click the button that says Christmas Shop, and then it'll take you to uh, Gas of his Christmas Shop. And from there, you can either use the search widget to search for whatever item you want to buy, or alternatively, and perhaps more easily, just click through the Amazon banners, and they'll take you to Amazon.co.uk, where you can do your Christmas shopping as normal. You don't have to do anything different whatsoever. Um, just do your Christmas shopping as normal at Amazon. But because you've gone from gas revenues to amazon we get a revenue fee on the things that you are purchasing and thanks so much for doing that or helping to pay for gasworthies.com so thanks for getting involved and thanks for helping to support the website right let's get on with can sip saturday and uh, last month's update uh, october's update had some pretty chilly weather uh, for the wind, we'll see where that's maintained uh, for this one. So we're going to start off with the mean uh, sea level pressure anomalies, and then we'll go on and have a look at the corresponding temperature and precipitation anomalies that go with these uh, mean sea level pressure anomalies. So starting off in December, and what we can say about December is looking at a very unsettled month. Now, this is a change on what we had uh, last month, but I'll just uh, show you what the pattern is for uh, December. We've got these deep blue colours around the UK and to the north of us as well. So the jet stream is really coming through the country, a very strong jet stream moving through the country and going into many parts of Europe and even into uh, Russia as well. So this is a very Atlantic-driven, very westerly, very zonal-looking uh, December from the Kansas model. This is a change on what we had last month because last month the model was going for a lot of blocking up around Greenland, a lot of northern blocking was being indicated for December uh, from Cansips last month. So this is a change from the model. It's reduced the blocking to the north massively, and it just ha is a very westerly and Atlantic-driven month. So we'll see what the effect of that is when we have a look at the temperature and precipitation on this in a few minutes. So as we move through into uh, January, there's very little change for January, actually. It's seeing another very, very Atlantic-driven month. Uh, there we go. All the blue colours are in there. Jet streams coming through the country as well, like that. So again, it's more of the same. Another potentially stormy month as we're going through into January 2016. But very Atlantic-driven. And uh, I think we're going to expect a wet and windy and possibly mild month. But as I say, have a look at the temperatures on that in a second. But again, December, January, both looking very unsettled indeed. Now, a bit of a change for February. The red uh, colours begin to appear to the north. So we have got signs of a bit of northern blocking there around Greenland. Starting to get going in February. The uh, blue colours, you'll notice those are shifting to the south. So the jet stream is being pushed southwards. We may be on the colder side of the jet there. And possibly starting to open the door to some northerly 
and northeasterly influences. Now, the complicating factor with this is that the high pressure around the Azores is still quite strong, um, actually. So we've got two high pressures, one across Green, one across the Azores, sort of battling with one another. We're in between uh, with this trough going to the south. So this could go either way, actually. We could open the door to quite a cold northerly northeasterly month, or if this high pressure from the Azores is the dominating factor, we could continue to drag up southwesterly influences. Because of the strength of the Northern Block, and I tend to go with a colder month of February here, but as I say, we will have a look at the temperature and precipitation uh, anomalies that go with the sea level pressure charts in a moment. Moving through to March, this looks like uh, just a return of westerly winds, really, so we've got... Uh, Sea level pressure showing low pressure to the north, high pressure through the central part of the Atlantic. Jet streams probably coming through the country again, so it's another westerly Atlantic driven month. The colours aren't as intense because we're leaving winter when, of course, we've got the um, contrast between the cold air over the pole and the warm air in the uh, uh, middle part of the Atlantic. The contrast creates very intense colours and a strong jet stream. We don't have that in March because we're losing the intensity of the, uh, of the contrast. But even so, it's still a westerly, um, still a westerly driven month here uh, for March. Then we go through to April. Size of a change in April. We uh, start to get ridging through the central part of the Atlantic and going up a bit to the north. The trough is generally becoming centred to the east of the country. So this will probably have the effect to send the jet stream on a northwest southeast trajectory. And possibly we will start to open northerly winds as well. Now this, of course, is five months away, so it's an incredibly long time away. And it really is in the realm of speculation and being just for fun. But it is that suggestion. It's there last month. But as we get through into the spring, we probably start to revert to a colder pattern, at least in terms of the uh, of the anomalies. And then we move through into May, which is as far as I'm going to go. I could go right away through to October 2016. But I'm going to stop in May. I think six months is enough. And what we see for May is that we get a ridge of high pressure building into the country, actually. So uh, not a bad month. Uh, the jet stream is going pretty weak. It's probably splitting, uh, something like that. And that could give us a lot of dry and quite pleasant weather as we go through into May under a ridge of high pressure. Right, let's have a look at the temperatures that go with this. Now, uh, last month, December was being signalled to be a very cold month. That's gone uh, now for November's update from uh, the Kansas City model. So now we're looking at a fairly mildish month, really, uh, for December. The anomaly isn't particularly intense, but it's certainly a bit milder. Uh, than average. So the fact that such a switch has taken place uh, for December from last month to this month does give us a few question marks about the reliability of this model. Uh, actually, we've got to take this with a pinch of same as we do with CFS V2, um, and maybe it'll uh, it'll have the wrong signal for December um, and the uh, cold month that we had signal last month will actually be the way things go. But anyway, for uh, December this month, the model is predicting near normal to above average temperatures. And that intensifies as we go through into January. A very mild January is being signalled there. Notice most of America looking very cold. But we are, uh, are having another very mild um, January. The temperature scale is on the side just here. So the temperature anomalies are between around 2 and 3 Celsius above average uh, for January. That is an exceptionally mild month being signalled by CanSips. We go through to February. Now this is where I thought we could get something a bit colder in February, but the temperature anomaly uh, is actually looking again significantly warmer than average. So December is still the coldest month, to be honest, of the winter, although it's a little bit above average. But as we get through to January and February, those temperatures really do shoot up. And again, we're looking at temperature anomalies of around uh, two Celsius, maybe a bit more above average in February. Um, so, uh, well, I'm not quite sure how that works out with the temperature uh, anomaly, actually. I would expect with the with the sea uh, level pressure anomaly, I should say, I would expect with the kind of setup it's going for, 
that we would have at least the chance of bringing some colder weather into the mix in February, but not a bit of it um, from uh, from this model. Notice that the cold is all across central parts of Russia, deep cold there and going down in towards the Middle East. But for us, no, uh, it's another mild month as we go through into February. We get on into the spring months and the temperature normally goes back to average in uh, March. So a bit of a cooling trend takes place from January and February uh, to March. And uh, we go back to near North temperature. Remember, this is a westerly driven month as we get through into March, which uh, in March, a westerly um, driven month is probably going to give us the uh, normal temperatures through to April again near normal with the temperatures but hinting at being a bit colder than average across the west of Europe so Spain's a bit colder than average central parts of Europe are a bit colder than average as well so April probably out of all of these months probably holds the best prospect for giving us some colder than average temperatures otherwise it's milder than average all the way on this update from Kansit. And then we get through to May, uh, which had a ridge of high pressure in over the country, and I thought it'd be a very pleasant month, but for May, the temperature normally is coming out um, a bit colder than average, actually. So a fairly cool spring is being signalled here, with temperature anomalies either average or cooler than average, generally. Um, but it's the winter that's looking very, very mild, exceptionally mild winter, particularly in January and February, being signalled. Precipitation uh, looks like this, so December coming out as a very wet month, indeed. It's hardly surprising, it's a really deep trough that's in over top of the country, strong jet stream as well. I think it will be stormy month in December and uh, potentially very, very wet as we can see from uh, that anomaly chart as well. As we go through into uh, January, um, not as wet, but still hinting at being a bit wetter than average, but uh, it's not quite as wet as we get it in December. Nevertheless, both December and January looking wetter uh, than average, and in the case of January, exceptionally mild. Uh, February goes a bit drier than average. Now, this is all indicative, what we see here, these yellow colours, which are um, drier than average uh, precipitation anomalies. This is all indicative of high pressure sitting to the north and west of the country, and we've got wetter than average conditions down across Spain. I've got to say, to me, that looks like a signal for a colder than average month, or certainly a cooler month, maybe not colder than average, but certainly cooler than January. Uh, that ridging up there would presumably be opening the door to northwesterly or maybe even northeasterly influences, and presumably we've got a bit of a subly tracking jet stream going on as well. So I'm not quite sure about the temperature anomaly for February. It could be gone off on uh, one a little bit this month, the Can 6 model. And if that precipitation anomaly is correct, I would expect uh, a significantly cool, not necessarily cold on average, but significantly cooler month for February. For March, the um, precipitation is coming out near normal. Of course, going a very long way out now, but the jet stream more or less coming through the country like that. As we get through into April, uh, again, near normal precipitation being signaled for April. Um, and this holds the best prospect, perhaps, of all the months uh, of some cooler conditions. And then going through to May, it's drier than average, which you, which you would expect, given that an area of high pressure is sitting around uh, around the country. Just want to have a quick look at the uh, sea surface temperature anomalies um, as well because uh, of course we've got this very very strong El Nino event going on at the moment. Uh, almost a record breaking El Nino. It's certainly up there with uh, the strongest uh, recorded El Ninos of 82, 83 and 97, 98. So that is the signature for El Nino just there. Let's run through and you'll see that as we go into the winter, the El Nino signal continues. This is up to February. Still very much with that El Nino signal. All bid is turning a little bit uh, weaker. But as we go through into March, there's a rapid cooling taking place. This takes up to May. I'm going to go out beyond that just for this. And we get through to the summer. There we are in August. And that's La Nina beginning to develop through the central part of the Equatorial Pacific. We're swinging from a warm event to a cold event very rapidly uh, there on the Can 6 model. So we can say that the Canadian model certainly is seeing uh, La Nina starting to get going from next spring and summer 
onwards. That will have an impact, uh, and I'll be talking, of course, much, much more about that in the El Nino update that I'm going to do um, later on this month. And it will be a major player as we go into 2016. What happens after the El Nino, what comes after El Nino, will be a significant factor uh, for next year, and we'll be talking about that a great deal in 2016 but coming back to uh, the weather for the next six months anyway um it's all a bit of a change on what we had last month when the model was seeing a fairly cold uh winter particularly a cold start to the winter and then maybe february also a bit colder not this month it's going for a mild winter december is the coolest of the three but even that's above average and then january and february looking exceptionally mild very wet start to winter before it turns drier as well. And then still the hints there of a cooler spring. Now, remember, this is all just for fun. These long-range models are highly experimental. And going six months ahead with a long-range model is highly dubious. And as we saw last month when it was going for a very cold December and has flipped this month, we see that the reliability of these long-range models isn't the greatest. So uh, if you want something cold this winter, don't be too despondent about what the can sips is showing. I just lay the evidence out for you, present it to you, and it really is up to you what you think about it. Okay, that's it for now, and tomorrow we'll have the eighth uh, update for the winter of 2015-2016. We'll be looking at things such as El Nino, uh, Siberian Snow Cover. Um, we'll also be looking at solar activity and many other things as well. So come back for that tomorrow. Uh, but that's all for now. Thanks for watching.